guys, it's Sam from New Line here. In this video, we are gonna be talking about a really exciting new release that is going to be added to your New Line Q Pro Series whiteboard. In this release, we are getting something that a lot of people have been asking for for a long, long time. So I'm super excited to show you guys this today. This is our new AI tools. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, of course, is open your whiteboard. And if you're looking along the bottom of my screen here, you'll notice there is a new pen button added. So if I look down along the bottom of my screen here, you're gonna see this new little AI pencil. If I tap on that pencil, it's still gonna give me tons of color options, just like every other pen tool, but I'm gonna have two different options here. The first one is a little pencil with letters on it. That is going to be my AI handwriting tool. So once I select that option, I can take my stylus just like normal and I can write anything I want on the screen. It's gonna change into typed text. So for all of you who have been asking, hey, how can I take my handwritten notes and turn them into typed text? That is exactly what this AI tool is for. Now, one thing to note about this AI handwriting feature is the bigger you write, the bigger it's going to change into typed text. So if I write a little bit smaller, once that changes, it's going to be a lot smaller than that original example. So something just to kind of keep in mind, but the bigger you write, uh, the bigger it's going to show up on the screen. You can, of course, always change the size. If you wanted to press and hold to select it, you've got the ability to shrink that down as well. So you do have some options, but just know the bigger you write, the bigger the text is going to be. So you can kind of work on your spacing as you go, but you will always have the ability to adjust. Now, the second tool that is in that little pencil is going to be a pencil with shapes on it. So we, of course, have always had our shapes tool, but sometimes as we're going through a lesson, we are drawing shapes. We are kind of making notes as we go. And this shapes tool is going to give us the ability to draw a shape on the screen and have it switch to a perfect circle or oval or rectangle. If you are anything like me, your drawing of shapes is not very good. So I love that shapes tool. So now you'll have two ways to really easily add shapes to your lesson, whether that be with the AI shapes tool or the shapes tool that we already had embedded down here at the bottom, which of course now offers those 3D shapes as well. Now that is not all we have to offer you with this new AI handwriting tool. I'm actually gonna go ahead and start a new page just so we can see this a little bit more clearly. And I'm gonna switch back to my AI handwriting tool. So I taught eighth grade English. I'm gonna use some eighth grade English teacher words up here just so I can use this as an example. But AI handwriting takes it a little bit further than just handwriting to typed text. You can now use AI tools built right into your new line panel to kind of upgrade what you've been doing with your lessons and gives you a little bit more help so you don't have to pull everything from scratch. You don't have to pull in a thousand PDFs or pictures. You can use it really easily through this AI handwriting tool. So again, I'm going to take my stylus. I'm going to make sure that that handwriting pencil is selected. And I'm going to just go with a very simple one here. And I'm gonna let that switch over to my typed text. And I'm gonna grab my lasso tool down here at the bottom of the screen. Once that lasso tool is selected, I'm going to draw a circle with my lasso around the word that I wrote to make sure it's selected. Now down here on the end, you're gonna see two new options. If I just wanna search the web for that word theme, I can choose this first option and it's gonna open up a Google web search over there on the left side. That is the exact same Google web search that has always lived in our three dots menu under three dots and search web. So all of that functionality still exists. It's just a little bit of a shortcut that you don't necessarily have to type in the word. So all of that will still be there as well. But the one I really want to highlight is this very last option here, this little purple and blue AI icon. When I tap on that icon, over here on the right-hand side, I'm going to have this huge menu appear. So that is going to search whatever term you have entered and circled on your screen. So there's a couple of different sections here that we can look at. 
The first one is going to be paraphrase. That's going to pull information about what that word means, some type of place to get a definition or an understanding of whatever you have searched. It's going to give you all of that information here that you could then pull over into your work. So if you're talking about theme with your students, they're asking you what the definition is, you can use this paraphrase section. If I wanted to add this into my canvas, down here at the bottom of the screen, I have this little camera and crop box icon. That is going to be my screenshot tool. Just like I can in my annotation function, I'm able to take a screenshot of something that exists here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that screenshot and you're going to see those four blue arrows in each of the corners of my screen. So now I'm going to drag and I'm going to decide what it is I want to screenshot. So in my case, I want the whole first section because we're going to be talking about literature. So once I have that section selected, I'm going to press this second icon here. It's a little easel with two squares on top of each other. That is going to take my definition and paste it onto my canvas. Now, it didn't put it in the best spot, so I'm just going to press and hold on this again and move it up out of the way. You'll notice that when I tap back onto my canvas, that AI window has gone away. If I want to bring it back, it's going to be down here in the bottom right-hand corner. You'll see that blue and purple AI. I can just tap on that button and open it right back up to pick up where I left off. So that paraphrase section, again, is going to be like a definition of the word. If I go into the second section, which is questions, I'm going to go ahead and hit that plus sign to expand. This is a really exciting feature. This is going to allow you to generate questions based on the word or phrase that you selected to use with the AI tools. So you'll notice there's a couple of different options here. It does have some subject areas. Now we're talking about the fact that I was an English teacher. It doesn't say English language arts under subject. So I'm gonna go ahead and click indefinite. Indefinite is just for all of those things that don't necessarily fit into any of the categories listed above. And I can choose the grade level. So not only am I picking the content area, I can pick the age of the students that are going to be using this. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and choose eighth grade. And then I can also select the number of questions that I want it to generate. So if I'm using this for like an exit ticket, a quick knowledge check, I'm just gonna keep mine to five questions and I'm gonna click generate. Now up on the screen, it's going to populate five AI generated questions for eighth grade students based on my word, which was the. So I can see the questions, I can see the options, and I can see the answers. It is nice to know as you go through, if I wanna make a change to this one, say I don't like the answer that they gave, I can go in and make any edits that I need to to make this fit the needs of my students or the needs of my lesson. If I wanna go through and check all of my answers, I'm gonna save each one as I go, I can see the question, I can see the answer choices, as well as the answer that was selected. Once I have gone through and made sure that I like all of these questions, I'm gonna click this blue insert button here on the right-hand side. Once I click insert, it's gonna ask me, are you sure that you want to add this to your canvas? I'm gonna go ahead and click insert. Now you may be wondering, <laughs> where the heck did that go? If you look at my word theme here, you can see this little question icon up in the top left corner. But if I try to tap on it, nothing's going to happen. So how do we bring that question back for our students? In order to access that question, you're just going to select this word again. And now you'll see that that question icon is colorful. Once that's selected, I can now just click on that section and here are my questions. Now notice they're not editable anymore. This is going to be what my students see. This is gonna be the time for me to maybe use, you know, having my students write on a whiteboard and hold it up. Um, if you use clickers, you can use those. Uh, or if you just wanna have your students use a piece of paper, write their answer choice and maybe justify their answer. All of those are ways that you could have your students participate with this question and answer section here. So same way I could go through, I'm gonna read the question, my students are gonna read the answers, they're gonna write it down or however you've chosen to have them answer it. Once they have answered, say we've gone through all five questions and I'm ready to discuss. You as the teacher are of course most likely gonna already know the answer in your head. 
You can also always showcase the answer here as well. So it will tell your students the correct answer. And if you scroll down, it also has a brief analysis of why that is the correct answer choice. Now that is something that you may want to expand upon with your students, but know that it does have the ability to kind of give them that brief analysis there as well. And I can always rehide that answer if I need to. So if I go in, I go through all my questions, my students have answered them all, they can submit that to me after class, we can kind of grade it on the go, whatever works for you. But when I'm done, I can close out. And once I unselect that word, you'll notice that it's grayed out until I select theme again. So if you're moving to the next class period, something like that, you do have a way to kind of minimize that as you go. Now, again, I've closed out of my AI tools. They are going to live in that bottom right-hand corner here. So I just tap that AI button again. It's going to reopen up. Now, the next option is concept map. If I tap the plus sign here, I can create a concept map based on theme. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tap theme. It's gonna generate a concept map for me. Now, the thing with this is it's not customizable from the jump. You don't get to input you know, your different categories or things like that. But once it comes over onto your canvas, I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. I can then go in just like any other time I use a concept map and I can edit any of these sections as needed. So if I wanted to change, you know, the event theme, once I deselect, of course, my concept map, I could go in and edit any of those sections. Now, totally up to you if you want to use the concept map. You also will always have the ability to create your own through those three dots. So whether you want to let it generate via AI and go in and edit later or just create it on your own from the jump, you'll have two options for that. The very last section here in the AI tools is images and videos. So not only is it going to generate questions, you can create a concept map, give you the definitions. It's also going to give you related images and videos that you could add to your lesson. So in my case, I'm going to choose this image here. I like this one plot story theme. I'm going to press and hold on the image. See how I can now move it around. It's a little bit of a longer press than if you're used to using the whiteboard image search feature. So press and hold and then drag it over onto your canvas. It will take a second to show up, but there is my image. And just like anything else, if I wanted to move this around, I have the ability to press and hold and select it, resize it, move it around. And of course I can, go in and add any kind of writing as well. So if you want to pull in those images or videos, you will always have that option. Now, the videos do not have ads, just like the YouTube video feature that we're used to in our options menu. However, okay, you can see like my first option is a Travis Scott song. That might not be something that I want to use with my students. I can scroll through and pull in a video but just make sure that you check those for appropriateness ahead of time. Remember, you can always go in and pull a video in through YouTube through those three dots, just like we normally can. So tons of cool tools that you can now use through that AI handwriting feature. There will be more to come, but just wanted to give you guys kind of a brief overview of what this is gonna look like and how this works. So when it shows up on your new line panel after your next firmware update, you have the tools in your tool belt to start using this right away. If you have any questions, let us know how we can help. Happy teaching.